Hello everyone. Today we are going to analyze this frame using moment distribution method. Before analyzing, let us see the frame one time. In this frame, we have three different parts. In the span AB, we have a uniformly distributed load, 9 kN per meter, acting for the full span. In the span BC, there is a point load 24 kN acting at a distance of 3 meter from the point B. In the vertical member BD, we have a point load 10 kN. It is acting in the center. Length of AB is 4 meter. Length of BC is 5 meter. Length of CD is 4 meter. The moment of inertia for AB is 3i. The moment of inertia for BC is 2i. The moment of inertia for BD is i. This frame is a non-sway type frame because the fixed support in the point A will not allow any horizontal displacement. Now let us find the fixed end moments. First, let us find them in the span AB. In the span AB, there is a UDL 9 kN per meter. This UDL is acting for the whole span. The formulas for finding the fixed end moments are minus WL square upon 12 and positive WL square upon 12. After applying the values inside the formulas, we are getting MFAB and MFBA. Now let us find the fixed end moments in the span BC. In the span BC, we have a eccentric point load 24 kN. The formulas to find the fixed end moments are minus WAB square upon L square and positive WA square B upon L square. When we apply the values inside the formulas, we are getting M of BC and M of CB. Now let us find the fixed end moments in the column BD. Here there is a point load 10 kN. This point load is acting in the center. The formulas to find the fixed end moments are minus WL upon 8 and positive WL upon 8. When we apply the values inside the formulas, we are getting M of BD and M of DB. In the moment distribution method, we have to find the distribution factor. We have to find the distribution factor only in the joints. In this frame, we have only one joint that is the joint B. In this joint B only, we have to find the distribution factor. To find the distribution factor, we have to calculate the stiffness. Let us see the formulas to find the stiffness. If the fair end is fixed, the formula is 4EI upon L. If the fair end is hinged or with the roller support, the formula is 3EI upon L. If the fair end is continuous, the formula is 4EI upon L. From the joint B, we have to find three stiffness values for BA, for BC and for BD. First, let us find for BA. For that, from the joint B, we have to look at the point A. In the point A, there is a fixed support. If the fair end is fixed, the formula for the stiffness is 4EI upon L. For BA, the moment of inertia is 3I. So instead of I, we have to apply 3I. Length of BA is 4. Let us apply that. Finally, for the stiffness of BA, we are getting 3EI. Now, let us find the stiffness for BC. For that, from the joint B, we have to look at the point C. In the point C, there is a hinged support. 
If the fair end is hinged, the formula for the stiffness is 3 EI upon L. The moment of inertia for BC is 2I. So instead of I, we have to apply 2I. Length of BC is 5. Let us apply that. Finally, for the stiffness of BC, we are getting 1.2 EI. Now, let us find the stiffness for BD. For that, from the joint B, we have to look at the point D. In the point D, there is a fixed support. If the fair end is fixed, the formula for the stiffness is 4 EI upon L. Length of BD is 4. Let us apply that. Finally, for the stiffness of BD, we are getting EI. Now, let us find sigma k. For that, we have to add these three values. After adding, we are getting 5.2 EI. Now, let us find the distribution factor. The formula for the distribution factor is k upon sigma k. We have found the k values and sigma k. We can apply the values inside the formula and find the distribution factors. Now, let us start making the moment distribution table. In the table, first let us enter all of the members. Then, let us enter the distribution factor values. In the fixed ends, there will be no distribution factor. In the points A and D, we have the fixed supports. So, the distribution factor for AB is 0 and also for DB is 0. The distribution factor in the hinged ends will be 1. In the point C, there is a hinged support. So, for CB, the distribution factor is 1. In the joint B, we have calculated three distribution factor values. Let us apply them. Then, let us enter the fixed end movements. In the point C, there will be no movement because it is a simply supported end. So, MCB will be 0. In the table, we have to make CB 0. For CB, the fixed end moment is 17.28. When we add minus 17.28, with this 17.28, we will get 0. So, we have released CB and we have to give carryover from CB to BC. When we divide minus 17.28 by 2, we will get minus 8.64. Now, let us find the adjusted fixed end moments for AB, BA, BD and DB. There are no changes. For BC, we have to add these two values. After adding, we are getting minus 20.16. Now, let us make the first distribution. We know that we can make the distribution only in the joints. In this analysis, there is only one joint, that is the joint B. In this joint only, we can make the distribution. For the joint B, we have the members BA, BC and BD. For them, we have the fixed end moments here. First, let us make the distribution for BA. For that, we have to add these three fixed end moments and then multiply with the distribution factor at BA. When we do that, we are getting a negative value. So, we are applying inside the table as positive. Now, let us do the distribution for BC. For that, we have to add these three fixed end moments and then multiply with the distribution factor at BC. When we do that, here also we are getting a negative value. 
So we are entering inside the table as positive. Now let us do the distribution for BD. For that we have to add these three values and then multiply with the distribution factor at BD. When we do that here also we are getting a negative value. So we are entering inside the table as positive. Now let us make the carry over. For AB there is no distribution. So we cannot make the carry over from AB to BA. For BA the distribution is 7.592. When we divide 7.592 by 2 we will get this. Between BC and CB we cannot make the carry over because we have already released CB and made it 0. For BD the distribution is 2.53. When we divide 2.53 by 2 we will get this. From DB we cannot make the carry over to BD because there is no distribution. We know that in the joint B only we can make the distribution. In the joint B for BA, BC and BD there are no values. So we cannot make the second distribution. In this case we cannot proceed further. Let us add the values and find the final moments. When we add these two values, we are getting minus 8.2. When we add these two values, we are getting 19.59. When we add these two values, we are getting minus 17.12. When we add these two values, we are getting minus 2.47. Finally, when we add these two values, we are getting 6.26. .6. In this analysis, we have found all of the moments. For MAB, we got a negative value. That means MAB is acting in the anticlockwise direction. For MBA, we got a positive value. That means it is acting in the clockwise direction. For MBC, we got a negative value. That means it is acting in the anticlockwise direction. We know that MCB is 0. For MBD, we got a negative value. That means it is acting in the anticlockwise direction. For MDB, we got a positive value. That means it is acting in the clockwise direction. Now, we are going to find the reactions. First, let us take the span AB and find out the reactions. In the span AB, there are two moments. MAB which is acting in the anticlockwise direction and MBA which is acting in the clockwise direction. In this span, first I am going to find out RA. For that I am going to take moment about B. In this case I am moving towards right hand side. Clockwise will be positive and anticlockwise will be negative. RA is acting towards the point B in the clockwise direction. So it will be positive and the distance is 4 meter. So for RA, the UDL is acting in the anticlockwise direction. So it will be negative. When the UDL comes, we have to multiply with the distance and distance by 2. Then we have two moments. The 8.2 moment is acting in the anticlockwise direction, so it will be negative. The 19.59 moment is acting in the clockwise direction, so it will be positive. Finally, for RA, we are getting 15.15 kN. Then we can apply the rule sigma v is 0 and find out RB1. Now let us take the span BC. And find out the reactions. In the span BC, there is only one moment that is MBC, which is acting in the anticlockwise direction. In this span, first I am going to find out RB2. For that, I am going to take moment about C. 
RB2 is acting towards the point C in the clockwise direction. So it will be positive and the distance is 5 meter. So 5 RB2. The point load 24 kN is acting towards the point C in the anti-clockwise direction. So it will be negative and the distance is 2 meter. Then we have a moment which is acting in the anti-clockwise direction. So it will be negative. After the calculations, we are getting RB2. By applying the rule, sigma v is 0, we are getting RC. We have calculated the vertical reaction in the point B two times. To find out RB, we have to add RB1 and RB2. After adding, we are getting RB, which is equal to 33.89 kN. Now, let us take the column BD and find out the reactions. In BD, there are two moments. MBD, which is acting in the anti-clockwise direction and MDB, which is acting in the clockwise direction. In this span, first I am going to find out HB. For that, I am going to take moment about D. HP is acting in the clockwise direction. So it will be positive and the distance is 4 meter. So for HB, the 10 kN point load is acting in the anti-clockwise direction. So it will be negative and the distance is 2 meter. This moment is acting in the anti-clockwise direction. So it will be negative and this moment is acting in the clockwise direction. So it will be positive. Finally, we are getting HB. By applying the rule, sigma H is 0, we can find out HD. Now, let us make the shear force diagram in the spans AB and BC. We have to make this diagram using the vertical loads and the reactions. Now, let us make the shear force diagram in the column BD. Using the horizontal load and the reactions, we have to make this diagram. Now, we are going to draw the bending moment diagram. First, let us make the free moment diagram. For the free moment diagram, we have to assume every span as a separate simply supported beam. Using these formulas, we can find out these moments and draw this diagram. Now let us make the end moment diagram. Using these moments, we can make this diagram. For making this diagram, we have to see the direction of the arrows and draw. Now let us combine the free moment diagram and the end moment diagram so that we will get the bending moment diagram. Now we are going to end this session. Thank you for watching this video.